والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم اسلام Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Welcome to Beauties of Islam. Peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My name is Yusuf Estes, and for the next few minutes in this episode, I want to continue talking about a subject that I brought up previously about the Sharia of Islam and the Fiqh of Islam and the Deen of Islam and above all, the way to get to God. In the Quran, we found a verse that we spoke about in another program. In Adina in Allah al-Islam, Allah is saying, For sure, the way to Allah is Islam, submission to Him in peace. And in this segment, what I'd like to do now is talk about another verse in the same chapter or surah of the Quran. It's this chapter 3. Al-Imran, verse 85. And here Allah says, وَمَمْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ فَلَا يُقْبَلَا مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْأَقِيرَةِ مِنْ الْخَاسِرِينَ It's often translated to say, whoever wants a religion other than God's, he's not going to accept it and they're going to go to hell. Well, there's nothing wrong with that except that it doesn't include enough information for you to understand the comprehensiveness of the details that are spelled out here. It says that more or less that whoever desires a different way, a way other than the one that Allah has made available for you, the one that he's prescribed for you, the one that he has ordered you to follow. If you try to come up with something else, then no, he's going to reject that. He's not going to accept that. And in the hereafter, of course, whoever would do that would be a loser. Well, that makes sense. Because if I go to work on a job, and I show up in the morning, and I get my hard hat on, check in at the clock and put my name in there, and get my tool bag, I head out, I start doing my work, all well and great. And they've got blueprints in front of me and I'm reading the blueprints, uh-huh, do this, do that. No, you know what? I think I'll build the wall over there today. I don't like the wall over here where it says in the blueprint, I'll put it over there. And you know what else? These pipes look like they're too long. I'll just shorten them up and just stop them right over there. And maybe the electricity here, I think we'll just, uh, you know what, let's just use one wire instead of three. And now what's going to happen? <coughs> what's going to happen at the end of the day when the inspector comes by and looks and says, what'd you do? Well, first of all, it's not going to be accepted at all, is it? And you will be with the losers because you're going to lose your job. Does that make sense? So in the same way, every one of us has been created to obey him, but it's by choice. You can choose or reject, but if you want to obey him and you want to follow his religion, you want to do his will, then it means that you're going to have to do it on his terms. Otherwise, how would it work? Could somebody just say, well, you know, I want to worship God by swimming. You know what? I'm going to do so many laps every day, and when I do it, God's going to love that. He's going to give me credit for that. That's how I'm going to worship him. No, that's not what he authorized you to do. That's not what he told you to do. It's not really his religion, is it? So in this way, you and I could begin to ask the question then, well, what is God's way? What does he want me to do? How can I understand it? And that's where the Sharia of Islam comes in, by learning what is the basis of, of what God wants for you and I, and doing it on his terms, that is the Sharia. This is the place, as we mentioned in another program, that's the place you take the animals to, to get them watered. And in this way, we would understand that's fixed, it doesn't change, and we have to figure out how we're going to get ourselves from where we are over to that. that Make sense? All right, now... We do have a website about this. We're going to be talking about that at the end of the program. There's going to be a lot of questions you're going to come up with. And we'll give you a chance now to kind of think this through. What I've told you, we're going to take a break. We're going to be right back. Don't go away. You're watching The Beauties of Islam. Islam 
خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه ورتل القرآن ترتيلا Learning how to recite the Quran properly Learning the meaning of what we recite Concluding the ahkam from the verses which we recite Trying to implement what we learn in our daily life Would we'll listen to the participants and the guests We'll take your phone calls We're going to recite life We'll listen to your recitation And we'll correct it according to the rules and regulations Which we'll state in each episode Now your dream will come true. Will come true. In- Bismillah, alhamdulillah, you're back, we're back, and you're watching the beauties of Islam. What we've been talking about is the way to God and these episodes that we're doing right now. And we were talking about something called the Sharia and something called fiqh and something called deen. Sharia, as we discovered, is a, is a place, basically, and that's where you go to. It doesn't change. It's fixed. Fiqh, as we were about to learn, is something that gives you opportunities to find your own way in there with, of course, guidance of a law, but you can see how it works in a minute. And then Dean, which is the overall way that we've been talking about. What is the way to God? Is the Dean of Allah. Dean Allah. Now, let's talk about the subject of this fiqh. It means understanding, basically, how I understand and how I can implement what I'm being taught. I would like to give one example at least so you can get a feel for it and then we'll give you the website so that you can use that to follow up with at the end of the program. The example here would be one called hijab or the covering that women wear. In the Quran, the Quran by the way is part of the Sharia because it doesn't change. That's definite. <laughs> the Quran is fixed. It doesn't change. So in the Quran it tells us in chapter 31 uh, chapter 24, verse 31, that's Surah An-Nur, about the covering for women, saying that they have to drop down their khimar over their juyubahinna. Now, how do you understand that? Well, it means basically she's supposed to be covering the upper portion of her torso, especially the area of the chest, because in those days a lot of the women exposed quite a bit of that area of their body, and of course it's uh, not something good for believers to do. The covering for the nuns, for instance, in the Catholic Church and the early Christian women, all was very conservative. And basically, all you could really see of women in those days were their faces and their hands. This is also what we see today, even now, amongst the one, uh, women of Islam, many of the Muslim sisters still dressing in a very conservative manner like that. And we might say, well, now, exactly what is prescribed and then how come not all the people are doing it? Because obviously there's a lot of differences here. So which is right? What's prescribed is a covering. Now the next thing to do is to understand covering what, how, when, where. Not necessarily why, but it happens to be explained here. Why? Because you will be recognized as a Muslim lady. This is mentioned in this verse and in another verse in chapter 33, verse 59. What's happening here is we're getting a good understanding now that covering is important for women. Covering is important. They have to wear something called jilbab, a baya, uh, this covering the khimar over them. We get the idea now, but exactly how? Okay. One of the great scholars of Islam was asked the same question, Ahmed ibn Hanbal, and the demonstration he gave was to throw his own covering over himself and then part it so that like one eye was available to look out, look around and see. But basically he was showing to cover everything up. Scholars even now have said that essentially all women should be covered, all the Muslim women should be covered up, but that if their face is exposed, hands are exposed to do what they need to do, this is all right. 
And then the next thing we find that if they want to cover their whole face, this is not forbidden, but it wasn't something mandated. Meaning that if a woman didn't cover her whole face, certainly she wouldn't be punished for it. But if she did, it could be more reward for her. Another thing it clearly states here is who she should cover in front of and not cover in front of. She should not cover in front of her own father. It's no reason to cover in front of him, her brothers, or in front of her uh, you know, children, in front of uh, the, a list. It's provided here. Don't cover in front of them. Other than that, then she's free to cover in front of these people because they don't have any business looking at her beauty, looking at her attraction, and so on. This is kind of important because even in talking to my own wife and my own children, because my daughters are grown, and I'm telling them that, and I said that, you know, there is something in Islam, it's part of the Sharia, which is called the Aura. Now, the Aura is for men and women both. Between the navel and the knee, this cannot be exposed. You cannot show that to anybody. That's private. Very private, okay? But after that, the man doesn't have to wear a top, but if he does, it's really better, okay? The woman, she should wear the top, and especially if she's in front of men who don't need to see her, then she will cover also her hair, she'll cover her, you know, her uh, legs and so on. So what we've understood here now is that this is the basis of the who, what, where, why, is mentioned because this is the sign of the believers. This is showing that she's, you know, going to be protected by Allah. Then there's another thing, though. What color? We find in some countries the women wear all black. Iran, Saudi Arabia, places like that, you notice they wear the all black. Some of them, they're always covering like this, covering their faces, uh, or at least part of it. So... Here now is going to be understanding. How they get to this is through different teachings of Islam that are clear and some of the teachings that are specific and some of the teachings which are allowing a person to adjust for their particular ahwa or conditions. So if a woman, and you go to Africa, for instance, you find the women there have beautiful hijabs, and when I say beautiful, I mean they are something else. They've got colors and flowers and, you know, very bright and brilliant. But they still cover the same part of the body. And then in some other countries, you'll find that they're going to be wearing uh, more conservative in colors, but they're still having colors. Maybe they'll have blues or pinks and things like this, but more not so ornate. And then in other places, maybe they'll be wearing grays and browns and things like this. All of these are permitted, provided there's evidence in Islam that this could be acceptable and that it doesn't contradict the very essence of the Sharia. I'm sure I brought up a lot more questions in your mind with this. I know we didn't detail enough of it. You can't in these short episodes. That's why I'm going to give you the website. Go there and get some information. Then if you want to write back to us, we've got a place there for you to do that as well. Beauties of Islam. Dot com. That's the name of the program. That's the name of the website. And until next time, peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.